religion tries to box in God. There's one way God does something. There's one way God does this. How many know that there are many ways that God does many things? He, 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 is, he is not limited. And so we got to let God out of the box. When I was a child, I remember my dad getting me, you know, those little boxes. And you turn them and, and the, the, the clown pops out. It's really scary. I don't know why you give those ch- things to your children. But, you know, the music goes and boom, it pops out. But the revelation that we have to open the box. We've got to open the box. That's what we're going to do over the next three weeks. Open the box and let the word of God come out so we can see what God is and how God heals. And so there's many different ways that God heals. I get to share a few with them with you this morning. Number one, sometimes meditating on the word brings a healing over a period of time. And Proverbs 4 verse 20 to 21 and 22 in the voice translation says this. Keep them before you. Meditate on them. Set them safely in your heart. For those who discover them, they are life. And they bring wholeness and healing to your body. It's their body is actually responding to the word of God. Your body is responding. It's like there's this revelation that begins to come to you. You begin to have a jump on the inside where you're like, I've read it, but it's like I've never read it before. It's like all of a sudden it brings this jump on the inside of you. And the Bible says it begins to cut through wrong thinking you've had. Begins to cut through doubt. Anybody ever had some doubt? Wave with me today. Okay, so I'm not the only one. It begins to cut through this thinking, this doubt, this, this stuff that's been around your mind. Romans 12 verse 2 says, you know, be transferred from the inside out by the renewing of your mind. Your mind begins to think differently as you meditate on the word of God. Healing comes to your mind, your will and your emotions as you meditate on the word of God. And, you know, sometimes, this is my Bible. I love my Bible. And, but, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm reading it. And I'm just, you know, I'm reading my Bible every day because that's what Christians do, right? We read our Bible every day. And, and, you know, sometimes I'm reading it, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, oh, this is good. You know, this is just so good. This is like, oh, my gosh. And then if there's anyone near me, I'm like, listen to this, listen to this, listen. You got, you got to hear what this is. You know, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I heard that before. And, and they're like, what are you getting so excited about? I'm like, no, this is good. This just did something on the inside of me. This just changed the way I think forever. I'm not the same as I was five minutes ago. This is good. This is life. Why? And they're just like, okay, you know, good job, mom. Good job, wife, whatever. You know, but I'm like, this is different. Why? Because it changed me. It was for me. It did something on the inside of me. And Psalm 119, I was reading that psalm this, this week. That's a long psalm, but it's a powerful psalm. And 148 says this, I lie awake at night pondering your promises to me. You know, when, when something spoke to you, it doesn't just leave you. You're thinking about it again. You're pondering, God, that's what you want to do in my life? That's what you want to do on the earth? This is, this is your heartbeat. God, I'm pondering the promises. 162 says, your promises are the source of my bubbling joy. The revelation of your word, it thrills me. Like one who has discovered a hidden treasure. It's like, you know, why do you get happy? Why do you get so thrilled about it? Because it spoke to me. It was, it was my word. It, it wasn't, it, God spoke to me. It was like a hidden treasure that was hidden before on the pages of the Bible. And all of a sudden, it's not hidden anymore. There it is. And it's like, it's always been there. But in that moment, it is revealed. Number two, different ways that God heals. Sometimes the touch of a church leader releases healing. Sometimes when a church leader touches you, the Bible says anoints you, your body just responds, and it is healed. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Is anyone among you sick? There's the question. Is there a sick person in the crowd today, right? This is the question. Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, the spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. 
So it's like, well, I just got to struggle through this by myself. I got to just, you know, it's, it, I just got to do it by myself. No, no, no. It says, is there somebody sick? Is there somebody who's got some pain in their body? Is there somebody who's struggling? It says the church is here for people. And I remember the first time I ever went into a prayer line at church. I had been going to church for about a year and hearing God's word. And, and one day I was in church and they said, if there's anybody who is sick, come to the front for healing. And I thought, I didn't really feel any pain in my body at the moment. And I was thinking, am I sick? But I, I, you know, sometimes you forget about your sicknesses because you're just used to it. Anybody ever just got used to something? And you're like, ah, it's not that big a deal. There's somebody else who needs a miracle more than me, right? You know, and, and I'm like, but I, all of a sudden I was like, what am I talking about? I have like one ear I can't hear out of. You know, I had perfect hearing in one ear, but I had learned to live my life with only being able to hear out of one ear. So I went to the front and I thought, it's worth a try. Has anyone ever just thought, it's worth a try? It's worth a try. I can't leave more deaf. I can't leave more sicker, right? You know, if I go back and I can still only hear out of one ear, same as it was before. So I go up to the front. And I remember the pastor coming to pray, and he said, what's, what's wrong with you? I said, well, I can only hear out of one ear. I've got perfect hearing on this side, but I can only hear out of one ear. I can't hear out of this ear. And he said, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And he put his finger in my ear, which was a little bit of a shock, <laughs> especially since I'd never done this before, okay? So I was like, he put his finger in my ear and prayed for me. And when he pulled his finger out of my ear, there was like a pop that happened. And I remember thinking, this is the loudest church music I have ever heard. Because the band was on the stage playing, and, and I'd only experienced it at a level of volume. And I was like, this is a loud church, okay? Like, I didn't realize that. And my healing was totally, my, ear was, my hearing was totally restored. I never, ever had a struggle with my hearing again. Right there in that moment of prayer, God opened my ear. Mark chapter 6, verse 12 to 13 says, and they were on the road. They preached with joyful urgency that life can be radically different. I found out here and out of both ears made my life radically different. It brought an improvement to my life. It said right and left, they sent demons packing, and they brought wholeness to the sick, anointing their bodies and healing their spirits. Life is radically different when, when you've been struggling in your marriage and all of a sudden you have a marriage healing. Life can be radically different. Life is radically different when you have been addicted to alcohol or drugs and then you are set free and you're moving forward. Life is radically different. Life is radically different when you've had a heaviness, like a dark cloud over you of depression and that thing lifts. Life is radically different. You've had pain in a certain area of your back or your body. And you get healed, life is radically different. See, sometimes we learn how to just cope with life. And, and, and I'm not saying to just, you know, walk around complaining all the time. But sometimes we're just so used to it. I've been so used to hearing out of one ear that I didn't realize life could be radically different with the healing. Number three is that sometimes people are instantly healed with, with nobody even touching them. In the worship, they lift their hands in worship and are like a sponge just drawing the Spirit of God, and right there in the worship, they're healed. Nobody prayed for them. Nobody touched them. Just in the atmosphere of the presence of God, they're, they were healed in their body. Sometimes people are healed right when someone is preaching. Someone's preaching, and, 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 and they're like, they're hearing the word of God. Their, their spirit responds, and they just get healed. Nobody touched them. Nobody, nobody, they just got healed in the preaching. Sometimes people are healed in the prayer line before they get to the front. We've had people, it's like, they're, they're coming to the front, and by the time they say, oh, you don't need to pray for me. I got my healing back there. And they just keep on going. You're like, oh, okay, how did that work? God is not in a box. God is not boxed into one way of bringing a healing. And Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3 says, After he came down from teaching on the hillside, massive crowds began to follow him. Suddenly a leper walked up to Jesus and threw himself down before him in worship. And he said, Lord, you have the power to heal me if you want to. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the leper and said, of course, I want to heal you. Say, well, I don't know. Maybe God wants to. Maybe God doesn't want to. Can I tell you this morning? Of course, he wants to heal you. See, it's just letting God out of the box. It's getting out of that religious mindset. Well, the good people get healed. 
the people who don't sin get healed. When I went up there with my ear, trust me, I had sinned the night before. Okay, like I was not good, okay? And, and God didn't say, oh, you're not a girl. You can just have hearing in one ear is what you can have. No, he still healed me. Jesus said, of course I want to. See, if it's dependent on our works, it's not a miracle. We're working our way for something. If I, can just, if I can just get God's attention, if I can just, you know, be pleasing enough to God, if I can just be better, then he's going he's gonna to heal me. No, no, no. The healing was paid for on the cross of Jesus by the blood of Jesus, and it has nothing to do with your good works. It has nothing to do if you're naughty or nice. It has to do with the blood of Jesus. So Jesus responded and said, of course I want to heal you. Be healed. And it says, and instantly all the signs of leprosy disappeared. The last one this morning, sometimes leaving behind an old lifestyle brings healing. Sometimes leaving behind an old lifestyle brings a healing in your life. Proverbs 3 verse 8 says, if you, I want you to say that with me this morning, say if you, if you. If you depend on him, your body and mind will be free from the strain of a sinful life. Have you ever had that weight on you when you're trying to hide something and you just hope nobody finds out? Come on, will anybody be honest with your pastor today? And you got that, 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 it says it's a strain on you. It's not just a strain on your mind. It's a strain on your body. Have you ever got so angry at somebody that you had like that revengeness inside of you? That bitterness of like, I want you to pay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't point at anybody. It looks straight ahead, you know. But, but, you know, what does it do? It brings a strain on you. You wake up thinking about that person. Thinking about bad things that you hope happened to them, you know? It's a strain on you, on your mind and on your body. Your body responds to the strain of, of not living for God, of, of not depending on God, of not walking in forgiveness, of, of, of not giving it over to God. God, I made a mistake. I, you know, this is the air, this is the skeleton in the closet, and God says, I already know. You're never going to surprise God. God, I'm sure you don't know. He's like, I know. You know, he was there. And so sometimes our body, it says, if you depend on him, your body and your mind will be free from the strain of a sinful life. You will experience health and healing. You will experience healing and health, and you will be strengthened at your core. It says your body just receives this healing. And so, you know, in my life, I was under this, this shame and this guilt and this weight of the wrong decisions that I'd made. Of the things that I just hope nobody would ever find out about me. Things that I'd done that I thought, I I'm ashamed of that. And so I was under this weight of secrecy of how, how, how do you keep a good image, but you're, but you're hoping they never know what you did in your past. And sometimes when you just walk away from that old life, you just walk away from it. And you say, I I'm not going back to that old. That's who I was. And God, I give you my life. And you walk away from that old life. You walk into something that is new, something that is fresh. You're not ashamed anymore. You're like, like me or don't like me. It don't make no difference. This is my past. This is what I've been through. And I'm living for Jesus now. I'm not perfect, but I'm moving forward. And you're not ashamed. If you find out, you find out. I'll tell you. Just ask me. You don't have to go to anybody else. Just ask me, right? I'll tell you why. Because there's such a freedom. And my physical body responded to that freedom. My mindset responded to that freedom of being like, I'm not going to be under this shame. I'm not going to be under this guilt. I'm not going to just keep trying to figure out how to better myself. Because every time I decided I'm going to do better, I did not do better. Okay? Like maybe for a day. And then I didn't do better again. I was like, I, I am dead at this. You know, this doing better is not working for me. But when I gave my life to Jesus, he didn't say, you can do better, Carmen. He said, let me help you. Let's do it together. The weight was off me to change myself. And it was transformed. That, that, that strain was off. 